Welcome to Our Faith Catholic Adult Faith Enrichment. Today I'm going to talk about someone who could at some point be a canonized saint, but he's in the process. He's Venerable Matt Talbot. He has a very interesting life, and I wanted to share that with you today. He was born in May of 1856 in Dublin, Ireland. He was baptized three days after he was born, baptized a Catholic. He was the second oldest in a family of 12 kids. He grew up poor because his dad was a pretty severe alcoholic and all of his brothers, except for one, were also alcoholics, unfortunately. He went to school for one year when he was 11 years old. He went to school mainly so he could receive First Communion and Confirmation. Then when he finished up school after a year, receiving the sacraments, he went to work, working for a seller of wine. And he had to sample that wine. By the time he was 13, unfortunately, he was known as a full-blown alcoholic. A little while later, he got to work at the Port Authority, working and transporting whiskey. So his drinking, unfortunately, got worse from there. He frequented pubs with his friends, spending most of his wage on wages on drinking. And then he also ran up high bar tabs at a number of places. And when he ran out of money, he would try to borrow it or scrounge for it. He'd even sell his boots for some drinking money. On one occasion, he stole a street musician's fiddle and sold that for drinking money. By 1882, when he was almost 28, he reached a real dark period in his life. He had ceased receiving the sacraments, but he did go to Mass on Sunday. He referred to his teen years in his late 20s, until his eight, late 20s, as just straight up drinking. His only aim in life was heavy drinking. In 1884, when he was 28 years old, he was out of money and he was out trying to get drinking hoping that one of his buddies would invite him in to a tavern and give him a drink. None of them did, and he went home in disgust. He told his mother, I'm going to go take the pledge. So he went to a priest. He went to confession. He took a pl the pledge, meaning pledging not to drink for three months. Then he took it for six months. And then he took the pledge for life. He drank excessively for 16 years and then remained sober for the last 40 years of his life. There's evidence that the first seven years after taking the pledge were very difficult. He found strength in attending Mass frequently through praying and spiritual reading. His life had become one of prayer, penance and fasting, and daily acts of charity. He had a thing about honesty. It took him a long time, but he went to all the different pubs that he owed money to and paid them back, just going in and handing them an envelope with what, part of what he owed and walking out. He also tried looking for the street musician whose fiddle he stole to pay him back for that. He looked for him for seven years and never found him. He wound up taking the money he made from the fiddle, that same amount, and giving it to a church to have ma masses said, for the man whose fiddle he stole. He recounts one story in early sobriety, how he went to mass and wanted to receive communion, but he found that he could not move his feet and he heard a voice inside of his head, it's no use, you'll never stop drinking. And those were the demons working on him. They had him and now he's slipping from their grasp and they don't like that. He went to another church and the same thing happened at communion time. Then he got down on his knees and prayed, Jesus, mercy, Mary help, Jesus, mercy, Mary help. 
and they did, and they heard his cry. Even when his drinking was at its worst, Matt was a hard worker. He later in life joined the building contractors as a hod carrier, meaning carrying boxes of bricks for the bricklayers. And he worked so hard that he was put at the front of a line to set the pace. He later took a job in the timber yard, volunteering to do the hardest jobs. And when he wasn't working, he prayed. For, he went from being an indifferent Catholic to being a devout Catholic. He lived a life of prayer, fasting, and service, and eventually got a spiritual director, Monsignor Hickey, a professor of philosophy at one of the local colleges. He helped him with his reading. Matt had to learn how to read on his own. That's difficult. And that professor guided him in his scripture reading, reading lives of the saints, reading works by saints like the Confessions of St. Augustine. His favorite books of the Bible to read were the Book of Wisdom and the Book of Psalms in the Old Testament. He liked reading the Gospels, especially the Passion stories in the Gospels. Those parts of the Bible were worn to shreds. When he didn't understand a particular spiritual idea or scriptural passage, he'd go to his spiritual director and ask for clarification and continued the learning process. Monsignor Hickey also gave him a light chain to wear as an act of penance, and he became a third order Franciscan and joined many other Catholic associations. Matthew was a generous man. Although he was poor himself, he gave and helped his neighbors out helped out his fellow co-workers that needed a pair of boots. He'd just buy him a pair of boots, and he took care of his mother. After his mother's death in 1915, he lived in a small flat and had very little furniture. He rose at 5 a.m. every day to go to daily mass before work. At night, he would spend time on his knees praying, and he attended mass every Sunday. One day... In 1925, on Trinity Sunday, he was going to church and he had a heart failure and he fell and died. And when he was brought to the local hospital there in Dublin and he was undressed, they found that he had a chain around his waist, a chain around his arm, and a cord wrapped around his other leg and other arm. He wore those as an act of penance and a symbol of his devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and he wished to give himself totally to her as her slave, working for her in the world. There were many people at his funeral in 1925, and six years after he died, the Bishop of Dublin put in a cause for his sainthood. In 1975, Pope Paul VI declared him Venerable Matthew Talbot. Now we're awaiting a miracle for his beatification and one more miracle through his intercession for his canonization as a saint. He's known as the patron saint for those suffering from alcoholism. I wanted to share two quotes that I found from Matthew Talbot that are very powerful. He said, never be too hard on the man who can't give up drink. It's as hard to give up drink as it is to raise the dead to life again. But both are possible and even easy for our Lord. We have only to depend on him. And Matt once told his sister, Susan, never think harshly of a person because of the drink. It's easier to get out of hell than to give up the drink. For me, it was only possible with the help of God and our Blessed Mother. Many addiction clinics in the world have been named after Matthew Talbot. Addiction's a terrible reality. The addict does things they regret constantly. Their soul almost dies from drinking and drugging. After a period of time, they feel dead inside and the effects of addiction, addiction and all their failures to do what they know is right wear on them. The loved ones of the addict are also impacted negatively and have difficult lives. 
During Matt's time, Alcoholics Anonymous and Narcotics Anonymous did not exist. These associations help people with that problem to receive help from people who have that same problem. That can be powerful. Al Anonymous to help the persons affected most by the alcoholic, the spouses or relatives. They can receive healing in that organization from people who had the same experience and find a better way to live in the midst of struggle. Alateen exists to help the children of alcoholics. Alateen also offers healing and help growing up as a child of an addict or alcoholic. If you have a tooth problem, you go to the dentist. If you have a car problem, you go to the mechanic. If you have an alcohol problem, you go to Alcoholics Anonymous and beg God for help, but you have to want it. In the description of this video, I have a little intercessory prayer to Matthew Talbot to ask him for his prayers and intercessions. May the Lord be with you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Venerable Matthew Talbot, pray for us.